Thank you all for being with us, joining us early on a Tuesday morning. It's such a pleasure to see you all here. For those of you who don't know, I'm State Senator Rebecca Warren. I represent the bulk of Washtenaw County in the State Senate. And as many of you know, our fight to update the Elliott Larson Civil Rights Act to include sexual orientation, gender identity, and expression is now almost 30 years in the making. In fact, this marks the sixth legislative session in a row that I am proud to be the sponsor or co-sponsor of legislation to update our Civil Rights Act. In that time, we have witnessed significant milestones at the federal level in the fight to ensure equality for our LGBT citizens, including the Supreme Court's landmark ruling in favor of legalizing gay marriage in 2015, a triumph for all our rights. Yet Michigan continues to miss the mark, the pivotal opportunity to, make our to move our state forward and to join 19 other states that have already acted to update their civil rights laws to include all people. It's time for us to stop denying LGBT citizens housing, refuse them service, or fire them from a job simply based on who they are or who they love, or what their employer or landlord thinks that they are or who they love. As a result, we're allowing LGBT friends, family members, and neighbors to lose jobs, housing, and face egregious hate crimes in failing to correct these injustices by updating our civil rights law. Compounding this distressing fact, we not only continue to, to disadvantage certain people in our community, but we're also risking the future of Michigan's economic well-being. To be certain, as Michigan continues to engage in, global, in the global battle for talent, our business leaders have told us time and again that they look for states that have open and inclusive policies already in place, not only because they create a stronger and more diverse talent pool, but also because they provide a higher quality of life for their employees and their families. At the same time, our young people have made it clear that they want to live and eventually build a home in those communities that celebrate diversity. Above all, Michiganders understand the values of diversity, fairness, and equality, and that those are central to the future of our state. And because we know that no one should be fired or denied housing or services, it's become increasingly clear that we can no longer wait to enact this legislation. The longer we allow our state's progress to be hindered by those discriminatory policies, the longer it will take us to fully recover. However, we can correct those injustices and eliminate these setbacks once and for all by updating our Elliott Larson Civil Rights Act to include all of our citizens. In doing so, we are not only moving Michigan forward with the tide of progress, but we are encouraging economic development, attracting new talent to our state, and bringing our laws in line with our shared values of equality and fairness. It's time to move forward as a society and as a state to say no in uncertain terms. We will not tolerate discrimination. So I'm excited to have on the Senate floor today the blue back to update our Elliott Larson Civil Rights Act. I will be introducing that bill in the Senate today. I have colleagues from the House who will be doing the same on their side of the aisle, led by State Representative John Hoadley. But at this time, I'd like to turn the microphone over to Stephanie White, the Executive Director of Equality Michigan. Good morning. <clears throat> Uh, on behalf of the nearly 400,000 Michiganders who identify as lesbian, gay, bisexual, or transgender, I want to say thank you very much to Senator Warren and Representative Hoadley uh, for their leadership on this issue that impacts all of our lives so deeply. I know many Michiganders um, are surprised to hear that we even need a law like this in our state. After all, Michigan values include a strong work ethic that believes in uh, hard work, determination, and judging one another on our talent and our skills. Um, our civil rights legacy, as Senator Warren also mentioned, um, has put Michigan at the forefront of the civil rights movement in the past. We fought for and we've worked to protect citizens, all of our citizens, and to treat everyone equally under the law and fairly under the law. So these are the core values of who we are. 
So when a law like this is introduced, it's not too surprising to hear people ask, do we even need this law? Do we really need it? Well, unfortunately, the lived reality of day in and day out for gay and transgender Michiganders is falling far short of our core values. Just last week, Equality Michigan released the Michigan State results of the U.S. Transgender Discrimination Survey. It's a national survey that was answered by nearly 30,000 people across the country, and, over nine, and about 900 Michiganders responded to the survey. What we found, among other things, is that transgender Michiganders are more than twice as likely to live in poverty than non-transgender folks, and nearly one in five trans people are unemployed in our state, which is four times the rate for non-Michiganders. Furthermore, Equality Michigan responds to dozens of requests for help every month from every corner of our state, from gay and transgender Michiganders who have been kicked out of restaurants, they've been harassed on the street, they've been forced out of their homes, or have suffered from unfair treatment at work simply for who they are or who they love. And this is not right. These, this is wrong, and this is a vast and statewide problem, which requires a statewide solution. Lastly, it's not just a problem for LGBTQ Michiganders, as Senator Warren mentioned. It's a problem for our whole state. Our laws tell a story of who we are and what we value. When we fail to stand up for the diversity and inclusion of our state, it sends a signal to the rest of the world that Michigan is not yet ready to accept the best and brightest from around the country. On the other hand, by passing a strong non-discrimination law like this one being introduced today, we are putting our state again in the lead and showing that we're serious about investing in the future. And, and why do we know this works? Why do we know this is good policy? For one reason, every Fortune 500 company has adopted policies of diversity and inclusion to counteract the forces of discrimination. Some of our state's most respected employers have shown this leadership for many years. AT&T, Dow Chemical, Herman Miller, Whirlpool, all our automakers, they all know that non-discrimination is actually very good for business. It's good for our communities, it's good for their employees and their families. So I'm incredibly thankful for the uh, leadership of Senator Warren and Representative Hoadley for taking up this mantle of leadership to tackle this problem for the good of all LGBTQ Mi Michiganders because it's the right thing to do, but also for the good of our state. Now I'm going to introduce Mayor Edmonds from Ypsilanti, Mayor Amanda Edmonds from Ypsilanti. Oh, while I catch my breath having run across the lawn there, good morning. My own sexuality is not the reason I ran for office, just like it is not the reason most straight people run for office either. It wasn't what motivated me to serve my community as its mayor. It's never been my primary issue, so to speak. In fact, my own identity as an LGBTQ person was the main reason I considered not running. Even in my mostly welcoming community, my sexuality was the most difficult part of my campaign when every part of me was suddenly both relevant and open fodder for judgment and criticism. And sadly, it is in my own political journey, the thing I consider will most likely hurt my likelihood of seeking or winning higher office. But as I've been in elected office, I've grown into understanding my responsibility as a gay elected official. I understand more and more why this part of my identity is relevant and something I need to bring front and center, even if it does not command a majority of my marrying responsibilities. I am part of a community that still lacks basic civil rights in our great state. In my own welcoming community, it is easy for me to forget about this and that my family is still at risk. My family's economic and social positions make us less vulnerable than so many others for whom daily safety and security in their communities and workplaces threatens their ability to thrive mentally and economically. In Michigan, because there is not adequate state protection, 42 communities have implemented LGBTQ protections at the local level, and some, like the city of Ypsilanti's, have been around for decades. And these communities, like mine, believe that in your everyday life, your, sexual, your sexuality or gender identity should not be a barrier to your finding or keeping a job finding or keeping a place to live, or being served in a restaurant. And it's, it's shocking that in a day and an age 
when gay marriage is finally the law of the land, not too far outside my own political jurisdiction, you still have to worry about the consequences of bringing your spouse to the company picnic, or touring a prospective apartment with your girlfriend, afraid you'll be denied the ability to rent it, and judging one's safety in public and private until equal, equal protections for these situations are a given. One's sexuality and gender identity is both relevant and potentially incredibly consequential in every moment of every day. And in Ypsilanti, as many others who have offered similar protections, our community, our commitment to inclusion is also about competitive advantage. It is a reason people move to Ypsilanti. It is a reason people stay in our place in Michigan. And developers even tell us it is why they are selecting our community to invest in. And research backs up this real economic case for inclusion and for amending this law. Our state's own Department of Civil Rights concludes in a 2013 report that lack of protections negatively impact Michigan in many ways beyond people's civil rights, including the ability to attract and retain residents of all orientations and identities. Their own research found that about 20% of respondents said they planned to leave the state because they do not feel that Michigan values all of its citizens. Many major corporations in Michigan have long included LGBTQ protections in their non-discrimination policies. They know it makes sense for business. And in recent years, we know that other states have been boycotted. States have been boycotted, in fact, by major companies and sporting events because of their anti-LGBTQ policy decisions. So who does Michigan want to be going forward? Embracing inclusion by codifying basic civil rights into law is both our moral responsibility and our economic imperative. Please join me in helping others understand that it is foundational to creating the welcoming Michigan in this state that we truly love. Thank you. Hi, everybody. I'm uh, Ingham County Commissioner Ryan Siebold. I represent the 2nd District, which is the west side neighborhood, portions of the east side neighborhood in downtown, as well as Rio Town here in Lansing. And uh, I'm very fortunate to live in the city of Lansing, where I am afforded uh, protections based on my sexual orientation. As a matter of fact, it was a large part of the reason why my husband and I ch uh, made sure that we were in the city proper when we chose our home. Um, but unfortunately, we are well aware of the fact that I can go about two blocks from my house and be in Lansing Township, where we don't have the same uh, protections. And uh, that patchwork across Ingham County is concerning to me. Uh, the county does have the ability to do things such as non-discrimination in our hiring and firing practices, as well as the way uh, the county departments interact with our residents and even who we choose to do contracts with, with the county. But unfortunately, we don't have the kind of uh, more stri uh, stringent abilities that the local municipalities do to enact uh, a non-discrimination ordinance countywide. And uh, like I said, that, that patchwork is concerning because I shouldn't have to worry about which side of the street I'm on if I'm going to be able to eat at a restaurant or not. Um, and so while I think that it's, it's great that we have this ability, this patchwork really does need to be addressed at the state level. Uh, we need to have consistent laws across all jurisdictions in the state so that there's no more confusion, there's no more uh, worrying about where you are and where you aren't at any given time. And so while I appreciate the, the work that's been done by the municipalities and the urban core here in Ingham County, I think it's really time for us to take this law statewide uh, we've been debating adding uh, sexual orientation and gender identity to the Elliott Larson Civil Rights Act for the 34 years that I've been alive. Uh, it's really uh, quite to the point where it's time to get done, 34 years worth of debate. We've seen how its impact and effect in, in other states, um, and we see what happens when states try to discriminate. It's really time for Michigan to uh, move forward on this. So I'm hopeful that uh, the legislature will take a serious look at this legislation and, uh, and this patchwork that, that now exists and, and protect all of the citizens of Michigan, regardless of which jurisdiction you, have to, you happen to be in at any given time. And so with that, I'll turn it over to State Representative John Holtley. So you've already heard the testimony, you've heard the case. We know that this is something we need to do. I am so honored to be joined by so many of my colleagues here um, and so many more on the floor today that, that know that now is the time to act. In, the, in 2017, we've seen over 200 anti-LGBTQ bills introduced across the country. 
and including some right here in Michigan. Our country shouldn't be defined of who we're against. It should be defined by who we include, who we're for, which is why the work of today is so important. The state of Michigan needs to do something, and that is specifically we need to pass the Elliott Larson Civil Rights Act expansion to include sexual orientation and gender identity. What we know and what we've heard is that these laws work. They keep people safer. The example from dozens of communities across the state shows that when we implement these laws, they work. Families are protected and those economies do well. We know that when we, that states that implement these laws uh, don't see the horror stories that opponents uh, prescribe, but rather see the successes that we're able to champion in, in state after state. So the time is now. It's 2017. Uh, we've had 34 years of debate on a subject that should be closed. America and Michigan is best when it welcomes everybody. And one way to make sure that our values and our laws reflect, reflect that inclusion is by updating and expanding the Elliot Larson Civil Rights Act. So I'll be brief. I'm happy to answer any questions, my colleagues and I can, but we want to thank you. Um, and we know that today is important because June 1st marks Pride Month. The time is now. People have given their lives to act. We should honor that with legislation. Thank you.